Is this the best and quickest way to work out any song? We're about to find out, it's coming right up. I'm gonna show you some exercises that really, really do help your listening skills. The more you understand about what it is that you're hearing, the easier it will be to work any song out that you wish, whether it's a pop song or a rock or a track or a whatever it is, okay? Uh, we're gonna do it in an unusual way as well. See, normally when you do this, you have a teacher or an app or whatever it may be playing stuff and you've got to work out the sound of that. But that's quite a challenge to say the least. It's, it is very, very tricky. Um, you're gonna work things out based on what you can hear. You're not supposed to be given the answer straight away, but we're gonna do it in a really unusual way because you're going to be doing the playing. So for example, if you've got two notes, and you know which two notes you are playing, because you played them, you think, oh, how, how is that? A, how, that's not a tricky challenge. I know what notes I played. Well, the trick to this is that we're gonna try and pre-hear the second note or the second chord. And what do we mean by pre-hear? Well, it's the idea of getting used to the sound of something before you've actually heard it. So if that's the first note of a major scale, and that's the second note of a major scale, and you've heard that major scale once or twice before, and you know what it sounds like, if that's the first note, then can you sing the second note in your head? You don't need to be able to sing it beautifully out loud, just like I wouldn't be able to sing it beautifully out loud. I could sing it, but it wouldn't be beautiful. There's the first note, there's the second note. Do we know what the third one sounds like before we actually play it? That's what we're talking about. That's what pre-hearing is, okay? So in these exercises, make sure that you regularly stop the video, okay? And just practice each little idea, each little chord sequence, each little uh, transition from one chord to the next. Make sure you practice each of those so you get used to the sound of them. In order to be able to work any music out, whether it's pop or rock or classical, uh, we need to be able to hear the notes in the scale that the piece is based on. So if I just look at the first five notes of a scale of C, for example, we need to get used to being able to name and hear those notes in our head. One, two, three, four, five. You don't need to be fantastic at singing just like I am, not one, two, three, four, five. So you just need to get used to naming those notes. Uh, going up, one, two, three, four, five, and coming down, five, four, three, two, one. And then get used to the sound of going from one note to the next. So for example, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, that kind of thing. And the reason that we do that is because we're slowly programming the sound of those jumps or intervals, as we call them. The interval is the distance between two notes. And as you get used to the sound of those, then you start to understand where they would be on the keyboard or the guitar, whatever instrument you're playing it on. And then you'd be able to work it out because you recognize that sound. So first exercise is this. Sing up one, two, three, four, five, the first five notes of the scale uh, along with your instrument. Okay, pause the video if you need to go and try that now. And now do the five notes coming down, starting from G. Five, four, three, two, one. Do that a few times. And now try this one. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. And now the reverse of that. Five, four, five, three, five, two, five, one. Now try the same kind of exercise, but now getting used to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're getting used to the whole scale now, the whole eight notes. And again, if you practice singing up all eight and numbering those, and then the same coming down. So first of all, practice this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Practice that one. And now eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Practice that one. Now do the exercise where you jump from one uh, and then up to each of the notes. For example, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, 
one seven, one eight. Practice that one. And now the reverse. So the main thing is that you're getting used to naming and numbering those notes and the sound of them, very importantly, in your head. That is step one. Obviously, you're going to have to practice this many times to get used to it. If you're brand new to the channel, please do remember to subscribe, uh, hit that bell notification, and don't forget to like the video as well. Share it with your friends, even. The most common chords in any piece, uh, they tend to come from the scale itself. So the most common chords are the ones that actually occur in the scale that the piece is based on. So for example, if you had a piece of music that was based on that scale of C, then the most common chords would be that one. I'm gonna tuck my other fingers out of the way there so you can see more clearly. Obviously you'd never play like that. You'd always have your fingers over the keyboard, but I'll tuck mine out of the way so you can see a bit better. And we refer to this as chord number one, and we move everything up, chord number two, chord number three, chord number four, chord number five, chord number six. Those are the most common chords. You don't have to play those chords in that order. What I mean by that is, this is called root position. But what we can do is get rid of that C and flip it up there. And now we still have a chord of C, because we've still got C, E, G, but we've got them in the order of E, G, C. It's still a chord of C, it's just in what we call an inversion. This is the first time we've inverted it. There's a root position, because it's got the root note at the bottom, and first inversion is this one here, where you got rid of the bottom note and flipped it up there. Second inversion would be that one, where I've got rid of the E and put it up there. That second inversion and then back to root position up at the top again. So you don't have to play the chords in root position uh, as you move through them but uh, I think for this first exercise root position is much easier and we tend to just use these first six chords chord one two three four five six and we end up with C and then D minor we'll talk about that in a minute E minor chord of F chord of G chord of A minor so notice that when we got to the second chord, it was a sad sound, a minor chord. There's a reason for that, but we'll look at that in future videos. Third one is E minor, and the sixth one was A minor. So chords two, three, and six are minor chords. Chord one, one, two, three, four, and five are major chords. I've got C, F, and G. So those chords that occur in the key of C are chord of C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. Those are the most common chords. As we move through these exercises, I am going to be looking at different ways of playing these chords. We won't have to play all the chords in root position. Root position, like we've said before, just means that the root note is at the bottom of the chord. The root note is the note that gives the chord its name. And we're gonna move some of these chords around and we'll explain that as we go. Well, the best way of working out the chords to a piece of music, for many people, everybody's different, but uh, the, uh, the main way that a lot of people find it really easy is to work out the bass line, listen to the bottom note. And the reason for that is, because is if you know what the bottom note is, for example, if you can hear that jump going from one, two, three, from one to three, then you're in with a chance of working out what the chord is because the bottom note is often the root note of the chord. It's often the note that gives the chord its name. So for example, from a chord of C to that chord there, chord number three, the third chord, which is E minor, we can hear one, two, three, the distance there that that has jumped in the left hand has gone from the first note to the third note. You've got to make sure you practice this stuff. If you don't go round and round it and get used to the sound of all these things, then you're not gonna get any better at it. So make sure you practice. The next exercise now is to get used to the sound of those chords as you swap from one to another. So you can literally just practice going from one chord to the next chord, get used to that sound. And hopefully, as you move from C to D minor, you can hear that simple step from the first note to the second note of the scale, and that smooth movement in 
the right hand how everything just moves up okay uh, but the movement from chord one to chord two isn't actually that common. It happens, it does happen, but it's not as common as many other chord changes. So let's have a look at some of the most common ones. For example, if I play this chord, this is a chord of F chord four. How do we know it's a chord of F? If I got rid of that C and flipped it there, I've now got F A C. We recognize that as chord four. So I'm actually just gonna play it in that inversion. And I'm gonna put an F in the left hand. And then I'm going to go down to a chord of C. So have a listen to this. So if you play that yourself, get used to that sound of F to C. C, F, A gives you a chord of F. C, E, G gives you a chord of C. And I've got an F to a C in the left hand. If you get used to the sound of that change and program that into your memory, then each and every time you hear that, you slowly start to recognize it more and more, okay? But that's just the first of these chord changes. Let's have a look at some more. Instead of going from chord four to chord one, let's now try going from chord five to chord one. And what we'll do is, to make it sound a little smoother, I'm gonna change the inversion of the chord of C I'm going to. I'm gonna get rid of that C and flip it up there. So that you end up with this movement. Chord five, chord one. Chord five, chord one. Sounds very final. As if it's finished. I'm sure you all recognize that. Sounds a bit cheesy, which is very, very common. It doesn't have to sound as cheesy as that. I've just played it a cheesy way, but chord five to chord one is called a perfect cadence. A cadence is just a progression of chords that happens at the end of a phrase of music. So think about that again. A cadence is just a progression of chords at the end of a phrase of music. This is chord five to chord one. It sounds very final. It's called the perfect cadence because it, it sounds most finished. It sounds the most perfect way of finishing a phrase of music. So that's five to one. Let's have a listen to that four to one again. Chord four, chord one. That's called a plagal cadence. Chord four to chord one gets used an awful lot in, uh, yes, church music. So that's the end of the Amen. Beautiful singing from myself there. That's the Amen at the end of a piece there. Uh, but it doesn't have to be in church music, of course. That happens in all kinds of styles. Now let's see what happens if we go from five to six. Get used to that sound. Pause the video and try this yourself. Now let's try one to three. So I'm playing C, E minor. I could play C, I could play C to E minor like that, or I could go pause the video and try that one. Now let's try four to one again. Then five to one. How about five to six? One to three. So one of the exercises that you can do to help yourself is just practice playing these chords, first of all, in root position and naming them as you go so you get used to the names. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. Tell yourselves the names of the chords as you play them. The next thing you could do is you could practice the different chords in different inversions. So you could play C in root position, then first inversion, second inversion, root position, coming back down again. Now that is a massively useful exercise on the piano. Root position, first inversion, second inversion, root position, second inversion. How do we do that? Fingers one, three, five, 
jump up, now one, two, five. I'm not changing the fingering just to make it awkward, I'm changing the fingering to make it easier because you can see there that those two notes are closer than these two notes. So because they're closer, I've got a finger, uh, a choice of fingering, which is actually easier because those fingers are already over those keys. When I jump up to second inversion, I've gone for one, three, five. Just because if I went two, five, like I did on the last one, I've now got a more awkward stretch. That's a more comfortable stretch. One, three, five. One, three, five. Coming down. One, two, five. One, three, five. Practice through that. And then once you can do it for a chord of C, you can try it on D minor, for example. Up and down, say for E minor, same for F and G and so on. So if you practice all those chords in the different inversions, then you'll find the next steps even easier. The next exercise now will start to be getting used to how those chords sound, but trying to hear how they sound before we've played them. And what I mean by that is, if I play this chord of F, and I'm going to move to a chord of C next, can I hear in my head what that chord will sound like before I even play it? So I play chord of C, F, and I'm moving to C. Did we know in our head what that chord of C was going to sound like before we got there? That's the sound we'll end up on. Let's try it. Here's a chord of F. Can you hear in your head, or sometimes what we refer to as pre-hearing, can you pre-hear it? Can you imagine what that chord of C will sound like? Here's the F. That's a super useful exercise to try and get used to what it will sound like before we've played it. Let's try from G to C. G to C. Can you get used to the sound of those chords before you've actually played them? Make sure you pause in the video so that you try each of these exercises. Let's now try chord three to chord six, E minor to A minor. Play that one round and round. Now let's try chord two to chord six, D minor to A minor. D minor, A minor. Try those two round and round. Now chord two to chord five. Try that one on your own. Now one of the most effective ways to get used to training your ears to how all this will sound is to play through chord sequences that you're coming up with yourself because you're in control of that then. I'll show you what I mean. If I take A minor, for example, now I'm gonna play it as a solid chord first of all, and then I'm gonna to go to E minor. I just pick one at random. So I play. And now I move to another pair of chords, say F to C. So that sequence again was A minor, E minor, F, C. If I start to break those up as well, there I'm just playing top, bottom, middle, top, top, bottom, middle, top. And now play the same pattern, but on E minor. Now to F. To C. Try it again, A minor. E minor. F. To C. Now you can try this with any chords, of course. I've just put a sequence of four chords there together and you can try different chord structures yourself. So just throw four chords together, see what you, see what you get, see if you like the sound of it. 
But let's also try now some chords which aren't in the key. For example, any chord that's got any of the sharps or flats in is outside the key of C. So for example, if I play from a chord of C to a chord of B flat. Now that sounds a bit quirky now to our ears because we've been used to playing so many chords in the key of C. And if something's in the key, we say it's diatonic. So all these notes are diatonic to the key of C. Anything which is not in that scale, they are non-diatonic notes. So a chord which has got, for example, uh, a, a flat in it, for example, or a sharp, uh, that is a non-diatonic chord. So here's a chord B flat. So let's try chord of C to chord B flat. The seventh chord of any scale, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh note is often used, but the seventh chord is rarely used. There's a reason for that. We come to that in future videos. Uh, but the flattened seventh chord, so there's the seventh, and if we lower it, we get the flattened seventh. So that is called flat seven. And that's quite common in all kinds of rock and pop and cinematic music. Uh, so there's chord flat seven, and flat six would be here. E, uh, a flat, sorry. There's a chord of A flat with a, a A flat, C, E flat. So these are non diatonic chords here. So if I throw a sequence together that's got those chords in, maybe chord one to chord flat six, A flat, B flat to F. Now they sound really uh, different to our ears because we're using these non-diatonic chords but you ever listen to that sounds quite cool like You need to practice these, of course, over and over and over again. Just get used to the sound of them. Remember, one of the things we're aiming for as well is trying to pre-hear what we're about to play. So you aim for one chord, and you know, for example, that you're going to go for a particular chord next, but could you accurately hear where you were going to go before you actually got there? So pre-hearing is getting a good idea of what the sound is going to be like before you actually hear it. So as I say, make sure you practice all these ideas. Uh, do make sure you've subscribed. Don't forget to like the video, of course, but if you subscribe as well and hit that bell notification, then you'll obviously get updates when each of the videos comes up. Uh, practice well, take care. We'll see you sometime soon.